You should, you can, and because you're here, you will. Yes, you will. You'll feel better. You'll feel more mobile and more flexible. And that's what it said at the beginning of the screen about our practice. Every practice every day is different. We practice live start to finish, one full hour. If you can stick around for the full hour, good on you. If it's just 10 minutes, good on you. It's all good. You just got to do, and you can do it. I'm Jan. This is 316 Yoga. This is your yoga from home. Ah. <sighs> when you can do what you can do. You do what you do at home and you do what you do. And you don't worry about how it looks. All you worry about is how it feels. How does it feel in your body? As the bottom of the screen says, do what is right for your body. If it is painful, back out of it. Don't do it. Nobody wants any pain and not everybody can do everything. If it hurts, don't do it. If it's just uncomfortable, use your breath to breathe through it. Life is hard enough. Your yoga shouldn't be hard. It should be pleasurable. So ease off the expectations of yourself. Let the pressure go and do what you can. And just enjoy the journey. That's kind of my theme for the week. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the getting there. Do what you can and you'll get to your destination. Don't sweat it. And all of our journeys are different. All right, so grab your props, a couple yoga blocks, maybe a belt or a dog leash or a jump rope. Everybody's got one of those around, right? Or your strap. Have some water nearby and let's come on up to standing. And as you come on up to standing, get your dog in their dog bed. Go on, go, 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 get in your bed. <laughs> Put your dog away. Lock a stress number in on a scale of one to five, one to 10, what's going on? Lock that number into your mind and let's work on bringing it down. Let's start with our confidence stance. That's always good to feel confident, right? And everybody should feel confident. Spread your legs a little bit so they're a little wider than hip width distance. Hands on your hips or have a chair or a countertop nearby if you want that stability. No big deal, make it work for you. Hands on your hips, take a deep breath in. <sighs> and a big sighing breath out. Try to breathe in through your nose and feel the cool, refreshing breath. And let it go out your mouth. <sighs> Sigh it out. Send your elbows more to the back of the room. Let your chest lift up and hold on here. Let's start to work on our feet and our ankles, our foundation. Start to come on up to the balls of your feet and then come on down to a flat foot. You know, hold on to the counter, no big deal. 
Work those ankles, work the feet, get some strength going there. Breathe, maybe stay up higher on your toes, kind of like the Barbie doll foot, right? Hold it up here if that works, or maybe take it a little higher. Just find confidence in your balance. Focus forward, look forward, look forward, look forward to lots of things. Come on down to your heels and then rock back onto your heels and let your toes lift and try to independently wiggle your toes. Up onto the balls of the feet, down onto the heels, finding your balance. As comfortable as it may be or as awkward as it may be, just embrace it. All right, here's the word to think about today, and that word is enjoy. Enjoy. To enjoy means to find pleasure in, to find satisfaction in. And I want to focus on the word to find. To find, you have to look for it. We too easily complain about things. We don't find the good. We default to the negative. Let it go. Be positive, especially about yourself. All right, how you doing with the confidence stance? Maybe come on up nice and high on the balls of the feet. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Lower down to the heels. Adjust your feet so you're a little more comfortable. Send your arms high up to the sky for an extended mountain pose. Reach through your fingers. Bend in the elbows is okay if that's what you want. Lengthen up here. Think of lengthening through the crown of your head, through your spine, even through your hips. Interlace your fingers, send your palms to the sky, and start to sway gently from side to side. You know, bend in the elbows is totally fine. Just enjoy the pose. Breathe in, breathe out. All right, we'll get rid of that word enjoy on the screen and enjoy our palm tree pose. <sighs> side to side, lateral flexion, sideways movement of the spine. No rush, no hurry, you're just waking up, just doing what you can with what you got. All right, let's finish in the palm tree. Put your hands on your low back, send your belly forward, squeeze your elbows towards your spine, open up in your chest. Push your hips forward, look up to the sky, maybe look a little higher. Think of the chest lifting up to the sky, more so than trying to bend back, 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 really super far. Exhale, fold forward. <sighs> Let your arms hang toward the earth. Arms are hanging down, give them a wiggle, give your neck a wiggle, look back to your knees or up toward your belly button. A little bend in your knees might feel great. Just loosen up here. Breathe in, kind of feel your chest your belly come off of your thighs and then exhale sending your belly back towards your belly sending your belly button back towards your spine just breathe roll your spine up slowly one vertebra at a time come on up chin off of your chest last that's kind of a refreshing fold those are a refreshing feeling those are refreshing aren't they all right so arm circles let's tee out our arms and just do some big arm circles any way you want the other day we were doing nordic poles if that feels better in your shoulders you take the movement as much as feels good for you maybe they're tiny little circles add in the knees by bending them when the hands and arms come down and just wake up the knees the more you do it, the better it feels. Take your arm circles in the other direction. Bend in the knees a little bit more, maybe adjust your feet. You know what feels right. You know what your body needs. Give it to it. All right, let's finish up with those big arm circles. Let's do that big coat swing. Adjust your feet so you're comfortable. Arms are down, hanging toward the earth. Think of your fingers as heavy and your shoulders away from your ears. Lengthen up through the crown of your head and your neck is long and start to twist from side to side. Arms are loose, tapping your hip and your backside as you twist. Increase the depth of your twist if it's comfortable for you. Close your eyes if you want to, to challenge your balance a little bit, but you don't have to. Every little bit of movement is good. We're gonna do a little different variation of ragdoll today. Or you do the variation you like. It's always an option. You do you, do you right? Do what your body wants, do what feels good. All right, I'm gonna finish up with this big coat swing. Shoulders are loose, gonna make it my way back to the midline of my body. I'm gonna fold forward. 
Let the arms hang heavy. Put that bend back in the knees. Have, you can have your hands to opposite elbow creases, feet at hip width distance apart. You can do your classic ragdoll pose by swaying elbow toward knee, then other elbow toward other knee. I'm gonna let my arms hang heavy toward the earth. Maybe they touch the earth or maybe they don't, that's okay. Then I'm gonna take my hands and walk them over toward the outside of my left foot. Then I'm gonna swing my arms around, kind of like a gorilla pose, and then bring my fingers back toward the outside of my right foot. So just moving little circles here, back and forth. You can spider walk your fingers, you know, like a little spider. Walk them as far as feels good. Hold it there for a second. And then walk them back to the other side. Come back to the midline of your body, gaze back towards your knees or up towards your belly button. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Let it go. Soften in the knees a little bit, give them a wiggle. No tension here, just, you know, relax. Do what you can with what you got. Walk your hands a little forward and let's prepare to come down to our knees for a child's pose. Knees together big toes together. You can use a block to bring the ground up to you. That's fine. Let's do a classic child's pose. Knees together, big toes together. Bring your head down to your block or your two blocks if you want, if that feels better, or no blocks at all. Now in a classic child's pose, your arms are down by your sides with your palms face up. Maybe you like that. I'm going to do a slightly different variation. I'm going to keep my knees together and I'm gonna bend my elbows and put my elbows on the mat by my ears. I'm gonna bring my palms to touch so my hands are in prayer behind my neck. But my knees are together, and if you love wide-legged child's pose, you could take it now if you want, or we're gonna do, we're gonna do one in a little bit. Just wanna shake it up, start the new week off a little differently. Different is good, right? Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. <sighs> Sigh it out, let your belly hollow out. And then just imagine your tailbone going further back towards your heels. Nice gentle stretch in your triceps, the backs of your upper arms. Hands are in prayer. This is a time where you can maybe come up with your little mantra, your little meditative phrase, your positive, affirming statement about yourself. And that might be, I am strong, or I am capable, I am able, I can do it. Any of those, you know what you need to hear today in your inner being. So come up with your little mantra. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Really come into your breath here. Let the outside world go and just be present on your mat right here, this moment, that's all that matters. Maybe close your lips and breathe in and out of your nose only. This is your little variation of your classic child's pose today. Come back to it anytime you like. Right now I'm gonna come out of the pose and bring my hands on down to the mat. I'm gonna come into that neutral tabletop position. In the neutral tabletop position, my hands are underneath my shoulders, my knees are underneath my hips. I'm gonna press the earth away, I'm gonna press the tops of my feet into the mat as well. So I feel like my back is nice and straight from the crown of my head to my tailbone. I'm gonna take a deep breath in, and a deep breath out, and as I exhale, I'm gonna bring my chin to my chest and tuck my tailbone under, sucking my belly in and letting my back arch up to the sky for cow cat pose. Then I'm gonna take cow pose, which is just the opposite, crown of the head and tailbone lift. So you're moving your spine. Think of curving your spine in the shape of a letter C and then a backward C, if you will. So push the earth away, cat. Keep pushing the earth away and take it to cow. So let it feel good in your low back. So many of us, when we have back trouble, it's in the low back. All right, that's your cat-cow. Keep it up if you like, but I'm gonna take a cat-cow pose where I'm going to extend my leg. So you can do that if you want to. So extend the right leg, plant the ball of the right foot down on your mat, and just kind of push into that leg. So just feel the goodness 
I, I feel it from the ball of my foot. I feel it actually from my toes, from my toes up through the center of my foot, my heel, my Achilles tendon, all the way up to the hip. Keep it right here. And then lift the right leg, cross the right leg over the midline of the body, hugging high in the upper inner thighs. Plant the ball of the foot down on the opposite side of your body. Adjust your hips so both hips are equal distant to your mat. So much to remember, right? You just want to feel this really good stretch. Now I'm going to look over my left shoulder and I'm going to try to see if I can see my toes. Then I'm going to try to see my knee. Then I'm going to try to see my bottom. And then I'm going to take that right leg, which is long, and sweep it around to the side, avoiding my water bottle, and then bringing it to about hip height. I'm going to plant the ball of the foot, plant the foot down, and then lift the right arm up to the sky and open up. Let your fingers of your right hand go up to the sky. Just breathe here for a moment. Just feel what you feel. Breathe in. Breathe out. And then plant the right hand back on the mat. Bring the right knee back to meet the left knee. Other side. Left leg extends. Ball of the foot on the mat. Push into the leg. Feel the nice stretch there. Now your right foot, push it down, top of the right foot, push it down into your mat. Stay strong here. Lift the left leg, cross the midline of the body. Look over the right shoulder this time. And just see how far you can see. Hips are equidistant to your mat. Sweep this left leg, which is long and strong. Sweep it around to about hip height, plant the foot. Lift the left arm up, open up through your chest, through your heart. Lift your fingers up to the sky, maybe look up there too. Breathe in, breathe out. All right, release the hand back on down. Come back, left knee meets right knee. Let's do toes pose. All right, let's do it with one block today. Let's come to standing on our knees. Tuck your toes towards your shins. Place your block underneath your heels and have a seat on the block. Lots of variations and different ways to do it. If you prefer to do it a different way, go for it. I'm gonna take this classic variation of a toes pose. So first thing I wanna say is if it hurts, if there's pain, if there's like, wow, this is sharp pain, come out of it. Lean forward a little bit, take your weight out of your toes. I'm gonna sit back a little bit more, bringing my shoulders more over my hips. For my hands today, I'm gonna bring them behind my back. I'm gonna reach for opposite elbow creases. I'm gonna take a deep breath in and a deep breath out and feel the opening in the chest. Soften in the shoulders and let it be. Breathe in, breathe out, soften your jaws. You're strengthening your feet. You're bringing mobility and flexibility to your toes. Sometimes we flow this, we go quickly from toes pose to ankle pose. Today, just a little different. Maybe turn your head left to right. Maybe do some neck circles if that feels good, eyes opened or closed. Just move your head. Come back to the midline of your body, take a deep breath in, and then let it go. Take a deep breath out, maybe sigh it out here. Rest into the toes, because we're gonna go into our ankle pose now. All right, remove your arms from behind your back, wiggle your fingers and come on into your ankle pose. So take your feet, come on to the tops of your feet. You can use two blocks if you wanna bring the ground up to you and push into the blocks to allow your knees to lift off of your mat. Now you wanna keep the knees together though, lift them up. Maybe bring your hands to prayer center or use your hands down by your sides. There's, you know, like a little kickstand. So keep your knees lifted and just feel what you feel in your ankles here. Feels awkward, but it doesn't hurt, for me at least. You assess what's going on with you. All right, here's something neat to think about. I like this saying. Someone said this to me a couple years ago, and I really like it, and it stuck with me. Everybody needs three things in life. Someone or something to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. Very true, isn't it? Maybe that's something that you do is your yoga and that's good. All right, so how far you wanna balance this? Maybe take it higher, take the knees a little higher, but keep them together. And then let's finish up here. Come back to that neutral tabletop. Remember that one? Wrists under your shoulders, knees under your hips, lift your feet up, squeeze and scrunch your toes, circle your ankles this way and that, and then tap the tops of your feet out on your mat. All right, let's do bird dog pose. 
We do this often. On Fridays, we do it differently as we combine our Pilates and our bar and our, um, with our yoga and with weights. We lift our leg, our right leg. We're gonna bring the right leg knee to about hip height. Sometimes we have the weight behind it on Fridays, so check out that practice and see what you think. Keep your hips equal distance to the mat. Extend your leg long here. Draw the toes toward your shin so you feel you're tightening up in the glutes here and in the back of your leg. Push the earth away and press the back left foot into the earth. You can stay right here or you can extend your left arm forward like a bird dog pointing, right? Reach, stretch. Fingers of the left hand are spread wide. Thumb is up high to the sky. Reach through your fingers, reach through your heel and hold it here. You could use your block at the top of your mat if you wanna rest your fingers on it. If you're just getting into it, if you're just starting, no big deal to do what works for you. I'm gonna bend the right knee and the left elbow and have them touch under my belly button and then stretch, elbow to knee, and then stretch and reach really far, really strong, push hard into the earth. And then hand comes down, knee comes down, other side. Left leg lifts, knee to hip height. Left leg extends, drawn toward the shin. Press into the earth, right foot is working here too. Hold it right here, strengthen the low back. Lengthen through the spine by adding in the right hand. Reach the right hand good and strong and forward. Fingers spread wide. Reach, lengthen, you've got it. Lift your leg a little bit more. Think of a straight line from your fingers to your heel. And then elbow to knee once or twice. It doesn't have to touch. Maybe it kind of comes in the neighborhood of it. It's all right. Press into the earth. Lengthen through the spine. Elbow to knee if you like, once, twice, however many times. I think we did it three times on the other side. Let's plant your hand, let's plant the leg. That is your bird dog pose. Now let's do that wide-legged child's pose like promised. Knees are spread wide, big toes touch, hips go back towards your heels, and your arms reach to the top of your mat. Maybe bring your forearms down onto your mat. You can bring your head to a block, or you can bring your head all the way down to your mat. Lengthen through your fingertips, maybe spread your knees a little bit wider, tailbone, the tip of your spine, think of it going all the way back to the bottom of your mat. Push into your hands a little bit more. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's come out of this wide-legged child's pose if you want. If you want to stay longer, you can. I'm going to go into a thread the needle pose. For that, we're going to come back to a neutral tabletop, but don't be so hard on yourself as far as knee alignment goes here. Adjust your knees so you're comfortable. Send your right arm high to the sky and look up to your fingers. As you exhale, bring that right arm underneath the left. Think of, you know, thread going through a needle. Bring your right shoulder down to the mat, and here's where you adjust your knees so you feel comfortable and doable. Reach your left arm long to the top of the mat. Reach your right arm with the palm up far to the left side of your mat. So there's your thread the needle. Shoulder is down. Breathe, breathe, breathe. You got it. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. So you feel a nice stretch in your shoulder here. Maybe the left arm can reach a little higher to the top of the mat and the right can reach a little farther to the left side. Adjust your knees. Breathe in, breathe out. That's your thread the needle pose. Sometimes we do this or sometimes we do what's called broken wing. So you, you know, decide what you like. We'll shake it up every day, something different. I promise. All right, when you're ready. Slowly come on out, unthread, dethread the needle, left arm slides to underneath your shoulder, right arm goes back up high to the sky, look up to your fingers and then plant the right hand. Other side, left arm lifts, look up, exhale, thread the needle. Right arm goes high to the top of your mat, left arm goes far to the right side of your mat. Bring your shoulder down, bring your left cheek down, you can always use a block. Adjust your knees and breathe. Nice little twist, nice little stretch of the shoulder. Nice lengthening through your right arm. Maybe add a little more to it, stretch a little bit more, reach a little farther. 
And when you're ready, let's come out of it. Slide your right hand back so it's underneath your right shoulder. Send your left arm up high to the sky. Look up and then finish. Hand comes down. All right, grab a drink of water and let's prepare to do a plank pose. All right, you think, oh my gosh, plank, I can't do it. Yes, you can because there's a million ways to do it. Really, not too long ago, we had a full month of different planks, a ton of planks. All right, so grab your drink. Here's the deal, we set a timer. I'm gonna show you, if you're new to planks, come down to your back and grab your blocks. Or if you don't have blocks yet, go out and buy them today. Press your hands up toward the ceiling. Imagine that your the ceiling is your mat. Press your hands up toward the ceiling and imagine that you're in a plank pose. All starts in your head, right? All right, another variation. If you like, spread your knees wide. Not too wide, just comfortably wide. Arms go forward, hinge your weight forward so the weight is more in your arms. Fingers spread wide. You can stay here in this variation of a plank. Another variation would be to come down to your forearms, elbows underneath your shoulders. Send your knees back a little bit more. Hands are pressed into your mat, kind of like Sphinx pose, and hold it right here. This is not easy. Or tuck your toes under, lift your hips on up, and stay down in a dolphin plank. The other variation is a high plank, the classic high plank. Elbows and wrists are underneath the shoulders. Legs go long, back is straight, press into your mat. Let's start a timer. Take the variation that speaks to you. Timer, there we go. All right, shoulders are over your wrists. You're pushing the earth or your ceiling away. Hold it here, you're gazing down between your thumbs. Breathe in, your spine is long. Breathe out, settle in. You're strong. You're properly aligned. We've got 20 seconds in. You're good. Now, there are breaks you can take. You could send your hips high like a downward facing dog. Totally fine. You could drop to your knees for a breath or two, then get back in the game. All right, 20 seconds to go. Hold on. Push the earth away. Push the earth away actively. Everything is engaged. Everything is strong. Your mind is strong. You got it for 15 seconds. Hold it. Fingers are spread wide. Pressing into your thumb and your pointer finger. Five seconds to go. When you're ready, three, two, one, and done. Come on down. Have a seat. You did it. Congratulations. And however long you did it, whichever variation you did, you're on the road, you're on the journey, you're getting toward where you want to be. But you gotta work at it, right? You gotta create that path. Grab a drink. Let's do some other core stuff. Come on down to your back. But take your time here. Remember the enjoy the journey comment? Take your time, spread your knees, bring your big, bring your big toe, bring your big feet, bring your soles of your feet, that's it. Bring the soles of your feet to touch. Knees open wide, strap or your belt or your jump rope near your hips. Lengthen up, hands at prayer center. <sighs> Exhale, soften up and just believe you can do it. Then slowly come to recline. Hold it here, maybe take it good and slow. <sighs> You're in control, your core is strong. Oh, after doing that plank, yes it is. Come all the way down. Once all the way down, maybe adjust your heels a little closer to your groin, knees open wide. Take a deep breath in. Maybe you take your arms and cactus them out and hang out here in this reclined goddess. You decide, it's all good. Just being here and feeling this refreshing walk on this journey. Feels good, doesn't it? Breathe in. <sighs> Breathe out. All right, bend your elbows. Have your fingers lightly at your temples if you want, or stay in that reclined goddess. Well, I'm going to do some Supta Baddha Konasana sit-ups. As I exhale, I'm going to lift my shoulders up, chin up toward the sky, and then inhale down. Exhale up, inhale down. Lift and lower. You know, you may want to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Here as you let some heat go, breathe. Be proud of yourself for that plank pose you did, whichever one you did. Be glad for what you did. Be glad for what you got. You're here and that's nine tenths of the battle. All right, lift and lower. 
And then let's finish. Come on down. Maybe strike that goddess pose again and stay there. I'm going to do bicycle. I'm going to bring my knees together to touch. I'm going to keep the soles of my feet on the ground. Here's a variation of bicycle. Fingers lightly back to the temples. Exhale on up. And then let your left knee come towards your, or let your left elbow come towards your right knee. And your right elbow come towards your left knee. Little twist. You don't have to go very far. Perhaps you lift your feet up, have your knees over your hips, draw your toes towards your shins, and like you're pedaling a recumbent bicycle. Stay right here, it's all good. Whew. Maybe fingers are back at your temples. Exhale on up and you draw your elbow toward your opposite knee. Maybe legs straighten and you scissor kick. Hello to Tammy, Tyrone, Tina, Marina, Liz, Betty, Kelly, Margarita, Stan, Lynn, how are you? All right, let's finish. Legs come down, your stick pose. Arms reach long to the top of the mat, toes point long to the bottom of the mat. Just stretch it out like a big number one. Breathe in, breathe out. Shoulder mobility, it's happening. All right, wiggle your toes, circle your ankles this way and that. Bring your arms down by your sides and find your strap. Boat pose with the strap today. Just kind of teaches us a little bit about balance. All right, bring the strap, the center of the strap underneath your feet. Send your feet high up to the sky. That feels really good. All right, holding on to the strap, good and strong like reins of a horse. Inhale slowly, let your heels come down toward the earth. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Push into that strap. Hold on with your hands. Lift out of your chest, keeping your back nice and straight. Shoulders back, elbows tucked in and down. Hold it right here in your variation of a boat pose. You can bend your knees a little bit and hold. Maybe lean back a little more as if you're in a recliner. It's all good. Breathe in. Lengthen up through your chest, through the crown of your head. Exhale, soften but don't round your back, hold on. Breathe in, breathe out. Let your heels slowly come on down to the earth. Shoulders over your hips, take it good and slow, you're in control. Shoulders over your hips, walk your hands down your both straps. Little forward fold with an assist of the strap here. Gaze toward your knees. Breathe in, breathe out. Little bend in your knees might feel better. Breathe in, breathe out. All right, remove the strap. How are you doing so far? Straps, blocks, you can buy. They're not very expensive. Get them, they, they will just enhance your practice. Let's come into a low lunge and let's do some surfing. Good for your hips. All right, you got two blocks. Bring them by your sides. Come to standing on your knees. Bring your right foot forward. Right knee over right ankle. Push into the blocks, or you could push into the ground if you don't have the blocks yet, and send your left leg super duper long on the mat. You could put a towel under your left knee. You can stay right here in this almost like a beginning of a runner's lunge, or come on up, shoulders over your hips, or you've got these blocks, they're really nice. You can press into the blocks, shoulders over your hips. If you can't quite get there, that's all right. Hold on to the blocks and gaze down to your toes. So your body's at like a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna press on up. I'm gonna take my hands up to the sky, lengthen them. You don't have to, you keep your hands on the block still. Lengthen up, maybe take a baby back bend. Exhale, hands to first center, maybe come back to your mantra. Hands back to your block, start to surf. By surfing, I mean just straighten that right leg and then re-bend it. Take it to the depth of stretch that feels good for you. Maybe you really like to lengthen the uh, leg. Maybe you really like to bend the knee. Do what feels good for you and then walk the blocks back and maybe bring your bottom back towards your heel. You can sit on it or it doesn't have to, but just play with the depth that's working for you today. Maybe it's just a little bit of movement, but you know what? That little bit of movement is a whole lot more than no movement at all. Trying, that is how you get to where you want to be. All right, maybe no blocks at all as you surf it out and find your balance with hands at prayer center. You 
got it. Just don't quit. That's the thing. Just don't quit. And when you're ready, let's finish up. Switch out your legs. Knee, right knee comes down, left leg comes forward. Knee over ankle, because you're good and strong here. Press into your blocks or the ground to send the right leg long this time. I think this is where the magic happens. The leg is long, you're feeling it in the front of your right hip. Press into your blocks and stay right here. Maybe press up to your fingertips on the blocks and stay right here. Maybe hands to prayer center. Shoulders more over the hips. Maybe hands go high and lengthen up. Maybe you look up and then take your little baby back bend. Hands back to prayer center. Tell yourself something good about you. And then start to surf. A little, a lot. You know what feels good in that right hip. Just take a moment with yourself and <laughs> breathe. Maybe the heel, maybe the bottom comes back toward the heel, or maybe it sits on the heel. It's all good. Don't judge yourself. Be happy with what you got, where you are. And surf it out a little bit more, just finding the flexibility in those hip flexors. And, oh my gosh, and in that knee, right? What a bend. Let's finish. All right, so come back to standing on both knees. Place your hands behind your low back, squeeze your elbows towards your spine, push your hips forward, look up to where the ceiling and the wall meet, or maybe even higher overhead, think of the chest rising to the sky. <sighs> now shoulders over your hips, hands come down to your mat, kind of a neutral tabletop. Now tuck your toes towards your shins, let's go into down dog. All right, straighten the legs. So your body looks like an inverted V. Heels are slightly lifted off your mat. Feet are hip width distance apart and your hands are shoulder width distance apart. Heels slightly elevated, even a little bend in your knees might feel good. Don't stress out over this. Let your neck hang loose. I think that's the hardest part of this posture. Shake your head, look to your ankles or even up towards your knees or your belly button. Heels start to pedal them out. Feel the sensation in your feet ah, that's kind of reminiscent of when we began in that confidence pose coming high onto the toes then down on the heel and also reminiscent of the feeling and sensations you had in your foundation in our toes pose and our ankle pose you're strengthening your feet you're strengthening your ankles it's all good maybe come high onto the balls of one foot as you press the heel in the opposite direction on the other foot same thing switch feet Oh, let that feel great. Finish up, send both heels closer to the earth while sending your tailbone higher to the sky. Your neck, shake it out. Walk your feet up to meet your hands or your hands back to meet your feet. Come on up to standing by rolling your spine up one vertebra at a time. Come on up to your standing pose. All right, so let's do you will look taller to begin and you can keep going at this for a while, uh, and then we're gonna go into a variation of tree, which we haven't done very often. So you could stick with your you will look taller pose if you like. So bring your arms to a big letter Y. Bring your legs together, strong foundation here. You will look terrific, you will look taller. So press the backs of your hands into the back of the room. Chest is lifted, really push the backs of your hands to the back of the room. As you are ready, slide your arms down, bringing your arms into the shape of the letter W for the word will. So really feel the squeeze, like you're squeezing a lemon between your shoulder blades. How's that? When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. All right, bring your elbows in towards your waist, keeping the backs of the hands pressed toward the back of the room. Two L's, forward and back. Tee out your arms for the word taller and then pulse your hands. Back, back, back. Let's do it again. Big letter Y, U. Big letter W, Will. Two L's, look. T for taller and pulse. Third time's the charm. U, Will, look. Tight squeeze. Taller, T, pulse. 
Bring your arms, let them float down by your sides, maybe close your eyes. Feel the length in your spine. Feel how your head is nice and over your shoulders. Shoulders are back and down. Your spine is straight, good posture. Keep at it if you want to. Even go against a wall and press your hands into the back of the wall. I'm gonna do tree next. You can do classic tree if you like, or I'm gonna do this variation of a hot tree from hot yoga if you're familiar with that. All right, I'm gonna root into my left foot and bring my right foot on up. And I'm gonna bring it on up really high. I'm going to capture the lower leg, capture the foot, and bring the left foot into, or bring my right foot into my left hip crease. Now I'm going to focus on this bent knee. I'm going to let it go down toward the earth. I'm going to hold onto my right foot with my left hand. Now, maybe you can let go of it. I can't let go of it. When I let go of it, I kind of lose the height here. You could bring your hands to prayer center. But I'd rather you hold on to the foot, letting that knee go down toward the earth and maybe bring one hand to prayer center. Take a deep breath in, lengthen up, and a deep breath out, soften up. Now let's shake it up a little bit by turning this into a humble warrior pose. You can have a chair nearby for stability. Totally good, you decide. I'm gonna let the foot go just a little bit. So I'm gonna bring my legs into a figure four and bring my hands to prayer center. I'm gonna put a bend in my knee and I'm gonna come like I'm sitting onto a chair behind me. I'm gonna hold it on here. I'm gonna take my hands behind my low back. Boy, does this take focus, right? Maybe interlace your fingers behind your low back. Send your interlaced fingers up the back wall. Look down to your right toes or towards your knee as the fingers go up, up, up to the sky. Hold it here. Be strong. Let the arms release and come back to prayer center. Always a good place to be. Rise on up. Plant the right foot next to the left. Let's do another variation on the other side. Switch your legs if you're doing tree in a classic form. I'm going to root into my right foot. I'm going to bend my left knee. I'm going to bring this leg up and using my right hand, capture the outside of my left foot. I'm going to let the knee fall toward the earth. So the sole of the foot is up toward the sky. Hang on here. Hand can be at prayer center. Focus where the ceiling and the wall meet. Stay strong in your mind, your body, and your soul. Breathe, you got it. Hanging onto a chair is a-okay. I'm gonna let this foot come down a little bit to create a figure four shape. I'm gonna bend a little forward. Bring my hands to prayer center. Sit back a little bit like I'm going into a chair. So the right knee is bent. Hold on here and stay right here. I'm gonna release my hands. Send my fingers to be interlaced behind my low back. I'm gonna gaze down toward my right toes. Send my interlaced fingers up the back wall. Breathe. Find your balance in your humble warrior pose. Release the hands back to prayer center. Slowly rise on up, plant the left foot next to the right. Extended mountain, arms lift high. Take a deep breath in, you did it. And a deep breath out, let it go. Bring your hands slowly to prayer center. Create or go back to your mantra. Bend in your knees. Think of coming into a chair pose. Lift on up to the balls of your feet. Shoulders back over your heels. Maybe sink a little lower and hold. Drinking bird, very similar pose. Bring your hands behind your low back. Palms face down. Press into the balls of your feet. Maybe sink a little lower. Palms down, thumbs out, pinkies toward your hips, chest is forward, slowly lower, a little lower, and slowly lower, all the way down, hands to prayer center. Take a deep breath in, your mantra, and a deep breath out. All right, let's come on down. Come on down to your knees. Come on down to your belly. Once on your belly, Sphinx pose. Elbows underneath your shoulders. Forearms press into your mat. Fingers spread wide. Legs are long on your mat. Don't worry so much about how close or how far apart your legs are. You want to feel a little bit of compression in your low back. 
gaze down your nose. Head is nice and long and straight. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Push into your hands, push into the tops of your feet. How are you feeling? Breathe in, breathe out. There's your Sphinx pose. Let's take this to a locust pose. For today's variation, exhale the air out of your lungs. Come on down to your chest. So your chest is down, your nose is down, your chin, your forehead. Arms go long, down by your sides. Interlace your fingers behind your low back. Your thumbs are going to be pressed into your low back. Take a deep breath in, widen your legs a little bit, and a deep breath out. As you're ready, lift your shoulders on up, lift your legs on up. Work the interlaced fingers away from your low back. Lift and balance on your pelvis. Hold here, breathe here. This is your locust variation today. Finish, come on down. Hands go underneath your collarbones, legs are down too. Inhale, press into your straightening arms. Gaze down your nose, soften into your glutes. Deep breath in and deep breath out. All right, press on up to standing on your knees. Remember that little camel pose? Put your hands behind your low back, elbows squeeze towards your spine. Push your hips forward, look on up to the sky. <sighs> Shoulders over your hips, come on down to your back. But enjoy the getting here. Bring your eye shade or your towel up to your shoulders. Maybe grab a little drink on the way down. This time, Plant the soles of your feet on your mat. Hands to prayer center. Lengthen up and then slowly recline. Bring your back all the way down, nice and slowly. You know the pace that is right for you. Bring it on down completely. Once you're down, let's do a reclined pigeon. Knees are bent, keep a bent. Lift your right leg up, remember that humble warrior? Bring the outside of your right ankle onto your left thigh. Push the inner right thigh open. Lift your left foot up, allowing the left knee to come closer to your chest. Outside of the right knee, the one that's really bent on top, let it work more toward the bottom of your mat. You can use your hands or a towel to reach underneath your leg, the left leg, and interlace your fingers low on the hamstring of the left leg and hug the left knee in. Change it up a little bit by interlacing your fingers beneath your left knee, but this time on the shin. Hug the left knee in, drive the outside of the right knee away. Breathe in, breathe out. Draw your right toes toward your shin. That right foot, the one on top, send it about four inches to the left side of your room. <sighs> Plant the left foot down. Plant the right foot down. We have a great opportunity to do it again on the other side. So right foot's down, left leg lifts, outside of the left ankle onto the top of the right thigh, uh, left ankle on top of the right thigh. Push your inner left thigh open and stay right here. If you want, lift the right foot up. The right knee, you're trying to get it closer to the chest. Keep pushing the thigh open. Keep bringing the right knee closer to the chest. Maybe you take your hands or your towel, if your arms are just a little too short for it, bring them behind the right knee, rebend the right knee, and hug the right knee in. Interlaced fingers are always good too. Hug it in, keep your shoulders down. Perhaps you now move the towel or your fingers underneath the shin of the right knee. So you're on the front of the right leg now. Hugging the knee in, driving the outside of the left knee toward the bottom of your mat. Oh, you can feel the intensity here. Draw the left toes more toward your left shin so your foot is nice and flat. Your left foot, think of sending it four inches or six inches to the right as you tightly squeeze and hold. <sighs> right foot down, left foot down, bridge pose. Arms down by your sides. Push your hips up to the sky. Wiggle your shoulders closer to your spine. Push into your strong feet, bridge pose. Roll your spine down, one vertebra at a time. Left leg goes long on your mat. Left toes are drawn toward your shin. Left heel drives a couple inches farther down toward the bottom of your mat. 
hands interlace underneath the right knee. Remember this, circle your right knee ankle in one direction, then the other direction. Supine twist, left hand guides the right knee across the midline of your body. Work the knee toward the earth while your right arm tees out and your gaze goes to the right. Reminiscent of how we started out with that big coat twist, right? Right hip comes down, interlaced fingers, hug the right knee in, 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 and then release the right leg long, repeat on the other side. Right toes toward the shin, right heel drives even longer down toward the bottom of your mat. Left heel drags up, interlaced fingers underneath the knee, circle the ankle this way and that way. Right hand guides the left knee, as you roll onto your right hip, tee out your left arm and look left. Keep your left shoulder down, twist a little deeper if you like. You know what feels good today. Bring your left hip down, left knee comes back up to the sky, interlace fingers, hug the knee in and you maybe circle the ankles a little bit more. Left leg goes down to meet the right. Drag your heels up, keep them up together. Drag them up, up, up at the midline of your body, then lift them up. Left hand under left knee, right hand under right knee. Rock a little bit from side to side. Maybe rock a lot from side to side. A little bit of a low back massage. Come back to the midline of your body, keeping your knees together. As you exhale, peel your shoulders up, maybe kiss your knees or not, let it come close. And then come on down, send your legs long onto your mat. Time for your final Shavasana, or I'm gonna do pentacle today. I just feel like doing something a little different. Maybe cover your eyes with your eye shade or your towel. For your final Shavasana, work your heels a little toward the edges of your mat and your arms down by your sides with your palms face up and your shoulders away from your ears. Maybe wiggle your shoulders a little under your spine and breathe. For pentacle pose, which I'm going to do today, it's just a more opening pose. I just feel like being really open and receptive on my journey to just something new, something different. All right, heels spread wide. Arms overhead, spread wide, so I look like a big capital letter X. You do what feels good for you today. Whichever variation you're in, eyes are closed and maybe covered. Eyes are heavy in their eye sockets. Soften the area between your eyebrows. And deepen your breath. Pinky toes fall toward the mat as you feel some external rotation in your hips. So I don't know what feels good for you today, but certainly do it, try it, take it. You should, you can, and you just did. So don't be afraid to try something new. It always feels good. All right, take a deep breath in. And maybe a deep sighing breath out. You can stay longer if you like. Maybe your remote is nearby. Hit the pause button. And then resume it whenever you're ready. I'm going to end the practice today by wiggling my fingers and my toes circling my wrists and my ankles and spreading my fingers and toes wide, squeezing them toward the center and then extending them wide. All right, if you are in your final Shavasana pose, take a big good morning stretch. I'm gonna bring my arms overhead, bring my legs together from pentacle and just stretch it out. Roll into a fetal position by bending the knees and the elbows and rolling onto one hip or the other. Enjoy the getting there. Enjoy finding your path. Roll onto that hip. Bend the low arm. Rest your head on that bicep heavily. Let your top shoulder be soft. Deep breath in and deep breath out. You know you have to enjoy what you do and you have to find that enjoyment and be receptive to it. Deep breath in. 
and deep breath out. Let all the I can'ts go. Give it a go. You're good at it. Give it a try. All right, slowly press on up. Use your hands or don't use your hands. Come on up. Sit however is comfortable today. Crisscross the legs or whatever. She's right on cue. She always knows, doesn't she? Take your hands together. Bring your hands together at prayer center. Lengthen up through your spine. It feels really good. Think of your neck as long. Think of your spine as long. You did bird dog. Your spine is long. Lengthen up and exhale. Soften up. Blink your eyes open. Good job. Good job. You did it. You did it. Okay. You did a stress number in the beginning. What was it when you started? And then what is it now? It's a lot lower, isn't it? You feel so much better. You've got to move, and your yoga is such a great way to do it. Let me join you every day. I'll encourage you. <laughs> join us on Facebook, on YouTube. Tell your friends about us. We have a private group on Facebook. It's called Friends of 316 Yoga. Join if you want. Love what you do. Enjoy what you do. And look forward to something exciting, like yoga tomorrow. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Hey, you. Good girl. See ya. Thanks for being here. You did another yoga practice and your body is feeling better for it. Feel what you feel in your body. Enjoy and appreciate what you got and just show up every day and things will get better. You will feel better and life is good. It really is. All right. Our yoga is free for anybody and everybody. You know that. Tell your friends about it. Have them join in too. They can feel better and they will feel better. And if they feel better, they'll be more pleasant. And if they're more pleasant, they might just be a better friend. All right. <laughs> they can uh, check us out anytime they like. Facebook, YouTube, enjoy. If you'd like to support our broadcast, look at our website. It's www.316yoga.com. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're being faithful to your practice. See you on your mats tomorrow. <laughs>